to be here welcoming you on behalf of the Civic Society. I certainly don't want to make a long speech. I think um, the statue speaks for itself. If a picture is worth a thousand words, I think that statue is worth even more. It is, it is genuinely a, a moment of real pride. I think um, anyone who's uh, been at school in Cheltenham has probably been taught about Holst from uh, quite a young age. There are two things I wanted to say about Holst which haven't yet been touched on. The first thing, and I think it's reflected in the expression and in the gesture of the statue, is that he was a, a man who really was very unconventional in the way he lived his life and in his personality. At a time nowadays when every orchestra is committed to bringing music to young people, and we're all concerned about the future of audiences in concerts, it's important, I think, just to say that Holst led the way a hundred years ago. He wrote music for children to play because there was none. He wrote pieces especially to widen the audience for classical music. as Cheltenham Borough Council organised a host festival of concerts at the Town Hall and we heard earlier how much that meant to him. I also like to think that he had a lot in common with this town. As Mark was saying earlier on, he was the most outward looking and cosmopolitan of composers, drawing inspiration from a wide range of sources, from Sullivan to Wagner to English folk music, to the Hindu Vedic hymns. And they just are both soaring and animated presence, now make a, which is now a permanent part of these beautiful gardens, inspire us to make Chapman's future as illustrious as its past. Thank you. Oh, my love. 